in December 2009, when the Tiger Woods story uh, was really, really hot, I started a playlist, um, which was called The Daily Tiger. And for a few days, every day, I reported on what was going on with the Tiger Woods brand. So this is a great case study of um, crisis management and of the various perspectives that it can affect a brand, a personal brand, in a situation like this. So I'm commenting from a business perspective, from a literary perspective, from a public relations perspective, and here's a summary of the different clips. You know, I just picked up this magazine here. New Yorker, right? Intellectual yeah. magazine. Now, look at this. The Tiger Woods brand, okay? So, I mean, even this intellectual magazine now reports about the Tiger Woods story. It's amazing. I mean, last week it was just in the New York Post, no sorts of papers. Now, now it's everywhere. Yeah. Yesterday I saw an article, you know, uh, or actually uh, on, on the web I saw CNBC doing a story on it. They all discuss it now from a branding perspective and what the brand was before, what the brand is now, and, you know, the implications for the sponsors and, and, and that sort of thing. I mean, just totally amazing, you know? Are you talking about the Tiger Woods? I mean, I mean, who isn't, you know? I mean, yeah, it's just, it's just, just totally, totally amazing to me. And I, I think I should actually start a separate playlist just on Tiger Woods That's on, on, on the channel. Yeah, really. What are you going to call it? Um, I don't know, maybe, um, uh, maybe the Daily Tiger. <laughs> uh, you know, I just got back from my uh, trip to Korea. Mm -hmm. How was it? was great and you know what they're all obsessed with this Tiger Woods story <laughs> just, <laughs> just like, like us <laughs> well yeah but even more so because I guess it's you know there are so many uh, Korean golfers and all the executives are you know golfing so they are really really obsessed with the story my friend Darian Chung the professor yeah. from Yonsei I mean he goes to the New York Post website every single day he thinks that's the best website <laughs> to get the latest uh, um, yeah. sleeves I guess sure about the story <laughs> they, have a, they have a blog they have pictures of all the mistresses so he just <laughs> loves it you know? loves it loves it and and how do you think it's helping his image in, in Korea is it a plus or a minus you know well, it's, I think, too early to tell. Uh, right now, they're just interested in the story as such. And you know what? I think there is, there is something that's not part of this story yet, or that the, even the PR agents may not have considered, OK? Mm -hmm. And that is and not just to do the usual PR solutions in a crisis like this, but maybe to ask the question, you know, what does he want to be in the future? Who does he want to be in the future as a, as a person or as a brand? Uh, what should his image be in the future? And, you know, he could be uh, wanting to be Mr. Clean and show up, you know, with his, uh, with his wife in a conference and regret everything. Or he may want to be the bad boy or just maybe somebody who says, this is my private life and it's nobody else's business. Right. I think he could have different brands, uh, you know, maybe sponsoring in the future, depending on where he goes. Yeah, depending on his... Uh -huh. that's <laughs> I, I mean, yeah, that's right. He could have very different sponsors <laughs> in the future based on this story. Good, good idea. Well, what's, uh, what's new with Tiger today? Well, two more mistresses came out, so <laughs> that's certainly the moral dimension of this case. But it occurred to me that there is actually a, sort of uh, another ethical dimension. And what's that? Well, it's sort of, uh, should he give in? to the sponsors all the time, or because he hasn't really. I mean, he's losing uh, a couple of sponsors, but he's not saying at this point in time, uh, you know, I'll give in and I'll apologize for the money, right? Absolutely <laughs> so not. And yeah. that, that's quite interesting, I think. Yeah, he's holding that power right now. He definitely is, yes, he is. Well, a new day, a new Tiger story. I hear that a porn film producer um, came up with this idea to produce a, a film, actually a, a documentary, he calls it, of the encounter between Tiger Woods and one of the uh, the mistresses, I guess the, the porn star. Talking sort of about pornumentary? Yeah, pornumentary. Yeah, it's, it's in a way a new art form or a new genre at <laughs> least, you know, sort of like reality shows a few years back. And uh, I think there's lots of innovation now coming out of this crisis. So I, I think that is, that, that, is a, that is great. And in fact, they interviewed on Extra uh, that porn star and asked her whether she'd be in it and she said considering so great stuff so thumbs up for that one <laughs>
Uh, what else? Uh, Accenture I hear is not only canceling all the advertising, but actually is asking the employees to um, to hand in all collateral that has uh, Tiger Woods uh, image or name on it. And you know, frankly, that reminds me a little bit of the Soviet Union when they tried to <laughs> sort of erase some uh, historic characters from their images. So uh, I don't know. I I give it thumbs down for that one. And um, any anything else or? Do you guys have something? Or? His wife's maybe divorcing him, right? That's in the news today. Oh, that's right. That's right. All right. How do I rate that one? Um, <laughs> so, Tiger's no longer in the headline. There's finally some real news. The Tiger Woods brand is not driving the headlines today. You feeling a little lost <laughs> there, Schmidt? <laughs> Maybe a little bit, but uh, some people have in fact been asking uh, the, the question uh, what this uh, obsession with the Tiger Woods brand and, uh, and this story uh, says about the media and about society. I think that's a really good question. Um, what do you think? I just arrived in Munich and I'll be reporting the Tiger Woods brand story from Europe. Um, it's interesting uh, in terms of the perceptions here. Uh, his wife seems to be a hero in Sweden. And it turns out that Puma, the German uh, company and arch rival of Nike, seems to be talking to her about some sponsorship deals, uh, you know, creating a Swedish inspired clothing line for Puma. Uh, interesting development. I just got out of the theater here in Munich at a really, really cold night. Um, the Tiger Woods story is theater, it's stage, it's language, it's narrative, and it should be looked at it that way. It's not for the brand and PR consultants, it's really for the linguists and literary critics. Is the Tiger Woods story still hot? Well, I have my doubt these days, because people are naturally getting bored and they want to see new stories because they are variety seekers. Also, new stories are attracting our attention and there are lots of new stories around now. And finally, it's holiday times and we are concerned with other things. So, happy holidays. <laughs>